Fungi are amazing organisms. They play a crucial role in nature and we depend on them in many areas of our lives. In this video Eric's going to tell us all about the biology and life cycle of mushrooms, including some amazing time lapse footage, so stick around. So I've just been on a short woodland walk and it becomes immediately obvious how fungi and mushrooms, how crucial they are to everything around us. I'd be up to here in leaf litter were it not for them and this bit of wood would never decay. Here you can see it's King Alfred's cake just working away to break down all this complex material. It's not just vital for the food we eat, it's vital for much more around us. I could have easily started this film off in a supermarket and you'd be surprised how empty the shelves would be were it not for the kingdom of fungi. So easy examples to think of, bread needs yeast, there's chocolate without fermentation, it'd be really, really bitter. There's also fizzy drinks and other bits like detergent. They depend heavily on citric acid and citric acid on a large scale is produced using fungi and again fermentation. So their crucial ecological role is immediately clear and we know that us as human beings it's great for us too. They produce lots of good stuff for us not just the food the mushrooms we can eat but lots of other processes are dependent on the fungi. Not least modern healthcare completely dependent on antibiotics and antibiotics we owe to the kingdom of fungi. So it's a crucial difference here the mushroom and fungi. Fungi is the larger kingdom and the mushroom is a subset, it's the fruiting body of a certain type of fungi. So what I want to do in this video is look more into its life cycle, that is of the mushroom I mean, and go through its birth, its life and then eventually its death. So what we typically refer to as a mushroom is only the fruiting body. Think of it as an apple to the apple tree. The apple tree is much larger and is the living organism and the apple is crucial for the reproduction part of the life cycle. There's a huge variety in types, shapes and some of the mushrooms have got some very impressive features. So mushrooms come in two categories. There's saprophytes which are fungi that grow on dead or decaying organic matter and then there are parasites which infect living hosts be it plants or insects. When it comes to the birth part of the life cycle, spores are crucial and there's many, there's billions and billions of spores in the air all around us. Our bodies and immune systems are adapted to all these spores in the air. It's a microscopic process and the way in which some mushrooms release spores is phenomenal. I'll show you later on but this footage tells a story by itself. Once a lucky spore drops in exactly its right habitat, a part called hyphae looks for water and food. It grows and it tries to form a colony. In the form of a network, this is called a mycelium. And for mycelium to reproduce, it needs to meet up and join with a different mycelium. The life stage of fungi and mushrooms are vital to all life on Earth. Fungi live in mycorrhizal association with trees and plants. So what they do is exchange nutrients. The fungi cover much larger areas than the roots of plants and trees could ever reach and they take some vital soil nutrients for the plant and exchange that for some sugars. This is a lovely association and obviously means that we can benefit from more healthier trees and plants so everybody wins. But how do hyphae and mycelium actually live? To live and grow, the mycelium looks for food and works in a very sophisticated way. It knows where to grow and redirects itself if it needs to. It functions a bit like an inside-out stomach. So it secretes digestive enzymes and feeds off things like leaves and wood. We'll come back to how you can nurture this process in lesson two. So as I mentioned, one category is the saprophytes. They compost leaf litter, and waste material from trees, breaking down lignin, which is a complex material. What you saw on the walk was a good example. That was coal fungus, or as I refer to it, King Alfred's cake, it's Daldinia concentrica. But what you can see develop on the screen now is quite unusual. It's something that's specialized in using cow dung. It's called the hat thrower, Philobolus. It's very specialized 
and also is the fastest living thing on the planet if you allow for scale. And towards the end it's truly amazing how it releases its spores. That was pretty impressive, right? To get out of the grass is no mean feat for these little things. It's like you or me throwing a tennis ball over the Eiffel Tower. So the second category then are the parasitic ones. Can show you how close life and death are. They can be such close allies that some fungus, like honey fungus, kills trees and plants. But in the meantime, they thrive, of course. They can simply take sugars without giving anything in return. It's the exact opposite of the mycorrhizal fungi, which are beneficial. You also hear of woodlands suffering from fungi invasions. One example that's probably best known is the Dutch elm disease, which wreaked havoc with elm in both America and Europe. In the end, it even showed up in New Zealand. It's a fungus spread by beetles. In the UK, there's ash dieback disease. It's due to another fungus and seems a battle that's only just started. There are also some parasitic mushrooms which kill other living organisms like insects. The cordycep is a really good example of this. It specialises in different strains that kill different insects. Here's a bit of footage from the BBC. It's slightly creepy, but it's also amazing. These bullet ants are showing some worrying symptoms. Spores from a parasitic fungus called cordyceps have infiltrated their bodies and their minds. Its infected brain directs this ant upwards. Then, utterly disorientated, it grips a stem with its mandibles. Those afflicted, that are discovered by the workers, are quickly taken away and dumped far away from the colony. It seems extreme, but this is the reason why. Like something out of science fiction, the fruiting body of the cordyceps erupts from the ant's head. It can take three weeks to grow, and when finished, the deadly spores will burst from its tip. Then, any ant in the vicinity will be in serious risk of death. So for the fungus, the final stage is its reproduction, and that, of course, means spores in their billions, which in turn start the whole cycle again. Mushrooms are neither plant nor animal. They're a truly amazing kingdom in its own right. They're vital for life on our planet and also for our survival. That's right, mushrooms really are amazing organisms. Well, I hope you found that as fascinating as I did. I especially love the bit with the cordyceps fungus growing out of the ant's head. Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to the channel for more videos on mushroom growing and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.